Hello beautiful people, welcome to today's reading. In today's reading I want to find out how do people describe you to others. In this reading I want to find out what other people think about you, I want to find out what they say about you, but I also want to end with your most current powerful strength to take forward with you and take away with you from this reading today. So if you would like to find out these juicy details, I need you to pick one of these three piles. I highly recommend that you go with your first gut instinct. Spirit is going to guide you towards a pile which has the most relevant information and messages for you. If you do not resonate with the pile that you choose the first time around, please feel free to explore the pile, see if your pile is here. We do have those days where our connection with spirit is somewhat a little dicey just because we're going through some stuff. So don't feel disheartened if you do need to explore the piles to find your pile and guys if you need more time to meditate over these piles please feel free to pause the video here and I shall see you in your reading hello there beautiful part number one welcome to your reading let's find out how do people describe you to others and to begin with I want to find out what people actually think about you so we have the advocate here, for starters, for your energy, okay? And the light and the positive attribute to this is inspires you to put compassion into action. This tells me that people feel that you are somebody who moves through life being very humanitarian. Somebody who always wants to help people, somebody who puts energy into areas which is going to benefit others as well as benefit you. You're very generous, okay? People see you as being somebody who's very generous. I really think that people look at you as the person to come to when there's an issue. I wanna say this could be an emotional issue. You've always got the right thing to say. You're very good at putting yourself in other people's shoes. But I do also want to say that you are also the person who always knows somebody practically who can help out another person. So if you cannot help somebody out yourself, you always know someone who can help out that person. Now you may be somebody who's chosen a career where you help other people um, at a very personal level, I feel, okay? Because every, every career you're helping somebody out, but this is on a very personal level. I even wanna say that people see you as being very self-sacrificial as well, which, mm, isn't always positive, okay? Because I do feel on the flip side of people seeing you as being very self-sacrificial, people expect you to sacrifice yourself as well because you have done that. Now, whenever there's love, there's always going to be a polarizing balance of haters, okay? So we are gonna quickly touch up upon the haters because the shadow attribute to the advocate is embracing negative causes or committing to causes for personal gain. So I do think there may be a few people around you that think it's all a bit of an act or all a bit of a manipulation tactic to make money. Now, we all know that that ain't the truth. And this is just haters hating on you because I really do feel you have a level of depth which can be extremely intimidating to the people around you. It's like you're so deep, you're so wise, you're so generous that the people who don't have the things that you have because you've put the work in to build that kind of reputation and they haven't, they just see you as like a bit of a wheeler dealer manipulator. Like this is very much the kind of energy I'm feeling here. I feel like your mission in this lifetime is very deep because I can see networks here. I can see you changing people's lives for them to then change other people's lives. Also alongside this, we have Mercury and air. Mercury is a planet that is associated with Gemini, which is an air sign. So it does make me feel like people see you as somebody who's got a very powerful voice. What you communicate is backed by power. I also feel like people see you as somebody who is very popular. I actually see the Hierophant card here. Okay, the Hierophant is the first major arcana where there are other people involved. And the Hierophant is basically guiding the other people depicted in the Hierophant card. 
somewhat even a preacher, I want to say. Now, you may resonate with preacher kind of energy. You may be somebody who speaks outrightedly about your views, your beliefs, what you know. You actually may be somebody who says, look, like, I'm not trying to preach here, but, <laughs> you know, I can hear somebody saying that. I'm not trying to preach, but, <laughs> and then saying your piece. But I do think that people do view you as somebody who's got a very powerful voice and who is very influential in a community, whether that community be very small or be very large. I also see social media here because when I think about this advocate card, I think about Aquarius energy. And Aquarius is also an air sign. It rules the 11th house and the 11th house rules things like internet, social media. I feel like potentially you are somebody who is very active on social media, you speak your mind on social media, you um, somewhat preach on social media, even if you do not like, you know, me using the phrase preach, but you're somebody who shares your knowledge on social media. It's, it's, it's a brilliant tool for you to raise that vibration, for you to feel like you're actually making a difference in the world. I want to say people see you as extremely intelligent as well. Now. You may have heavy Aquarius in the chart. You don't have to have heavy Aquarius. It could be a sun, moon, rising, but I also want to throw out there like a Aquarius in, sorry, Saturn in Aquarius here. Because Saturn does rule that 10th house, it rules our career. And I do really feel like you may have chosen to do a career which like changes the world. Okay, you feel like it's your life's mission to do something different. I want to say to even be a little bit rebellious and a little bit different to the status quo because that's Aquarius energy as well. Breaking out of the status quo. Freedom is a word that I'm really feeling right now. It's like you're seeking your freedom, you're trying to help other people seek their freedom. And when I think of air energy, I think of freedom. It's like particles just being able to fly wherever they want to fly. It's like freedom is big in your energy as well. And I do feel like other people see you as being very free. Free spirited. But free through your fearlessness as well. Being fearless to go for what you want out of life. Now people also see you as somebody who is completing your life's mission here with the world because the world does talk about the ending of a cycle. It can even talk about world domination, which does take me back to what I mentioned about social media. You could be somebody who has chosen a career on social media or you speak out on social media, which means that your energy is dispersed all over the world. And I feel like people look at you, even if they don't actually say it, I think people look at you like you have power. You have power, you have influence. And I do really feel that you influence a lot of people around you but I do sense a secrecy around that as well. So I actually sense that not many people will actually admit that you influence them so greatly. I see, I even see people in your circle making big life moves, which were actually inspired by you, but they don't communicate to you that it was inspired by you. I see a lot of people laying low, watching you, trying to work out whether what you do is truth or what you do is that manipulation side of things and don't be offended by that because I know I know that you're not manipulating anybody but I think there's a lot of people around you that don't understand your way of life and your view on the world so they take a little bit more time to jump on the bandwagon and get on board it's like they take a little bit more time to process the things that you say or the ways that you move through life but they do even if they are trying to work out whether what you do is like a manipulation tactic they still take the influence from you to just go for gold go for what you want to go for i can just see you pushing yourself outwards constantly pushing yourself outwards which makes me think about that network i was seeing again where you're just constantly expanding this network is just constantly expanding don't know whether you're growing your own business, whether you're growing a social media account, whether you're growing a YouTube channel, okay, and people actually watching this grow. You're somebody who people see 
traveling the world in the future now you could be traveling the world already you could be somebody who regularly travels somebody who tells stories about your travels but if not i want to say that people actually see you moving overseas whether that be for work or whether that be you want to move overseas permanently i want to i want to say you're larger than where you are now your energy and your aura is too big now they say celebrities celebrities need big houses because their aura is too large to live in a small house the more attention you get the more power you gain your aura will expand and that aura doesn't live in a small house i know this is a really weird thing to say but it's true you know why why does why does trying to think of a celebrity why does kim k need a massive house when well she needs no she's got a big family let's try and use somebody else you know why does a, a famous couple with a lot of money need a house that has like eight bedrooms and acres and acres of land well because their aura is so big they need that extra space and people see that with you that like your aura is expanding out of your current home your aura is even expanding out of your current town it may even expand out of your current country which makes me think that you could come from a small town you could come from a smaller country or even if it's just a place in the world where people are just a little bit smaller minded i say this so many times but where i come from i always call it the place where dreams come to die and it sounds so negative but it's just very unfortunate that where i live people only know like one way of doing things People don't realise how free they actually are. And a lot of people who live where I live do not watch my channel and a lot of them don't support what I do because they, they don't understand it. Their mind just isn't broad enough for it or at least it's not broad enough for it yet. And I feel like you could be in a similar position here and that's why this energy is coming up. I also think you have this energy where even if you're not close to someone, you make them feel close. You bring a lot of comfort to the people around you. Even if you're not in close proximity, it's like your energy is like a hug. Even if you're not actually putting your arms around somebody, people feel the support from you. I think there's so much love in your heart that it expands outwards just through your energy just through your presence okay so what do people actually say about you because this is what people think but what people think and say can sometimes be very different depending on how secure they are within themselves so you've got the king of wands here for what people say and this is super super positive because the king of wands is a leader they're a leo card Leo is the sign of the showman or the showgirl, which again takes me back to this Mercury and air energy here that potentially you are somebody who is expanding your social network, is somebody who is quite well known, whether that be online or whether you're building your own business and you're, you're spreading the word. I want to say whatever you do, it does require that element of showmanship. Even if you have like some kind of knowledge or some kind of an invention to help people it requires you to embellish yourself to actually make people listen or actually make people buy your product and when I say that I feel very I feel like that's just so obvious of course if you're going to sell a product or you're going to say something it needs to be embellished it needs to be said in a certain way for people to understand or want it so I feel like that was very basic but I said it <laughs> and some of you may be like okay <laughs> okay that's what you do but what you do requires an air of showmanship and it may even require you to be the head of the company, the head of the channel, the head of the social media. And again, it sounds very, very basic. Because <laughs> of course, of course, but your face, I want to say, your face and your personality and your essence is very big in whatever this thing is that you're doing or whatever this thing is that you're working towards. Bear in mind, if, if you're not there yet and this energy is something that lives within your soul and you're like, oh my God, yeah, I want to be more vocal online or I have all these thoughts or I have this product that I want to share because I think it's going to help so many people. This is your calling to just fucking 
didn't mean to swear God, so just bloody go for it. But if you're already in this, it's also your sign that you're just going to keep on expanding. Leo is also the leader. Again, you are a leader of some kind. People see you as a leader. You may think, you know, do people actually see what I'm doing and think this is successful or am I just doing this? To be laughed at, but no, people see you as somebody who is courageous, passionate about what you do and somebody who leads people. This is such a beautiful part and it is so, so powerful. It's like when people talk about you, they talk about your successes here with the King of Wands. They talk about your, the power in your influence. Maybe these people aren't telling you how you've influenced them, but they're telling other people how you've influenced them. They may not tell you how well they think you're doing, but they're telling other people how well they think you're doing. You know, I see people meeting, maybe even family meeting at like a family, um, a family do of some kind. You know, maybe like your mother, your father, your grandparent has seen what you've been doing. And they're not telling you like, wow, you're doing so, so well. They're telling the rest of the family because they have pride in what you do. And this is another thing the King of Wands expresses. It's, it's pride. It's pride in what you've created. And I think there's a lot of people around you who are close to you, who have a lot of pride in you. It's like they're using you as an extension to their own pride, which isn't the healthiest, but it's a compliment. <laughs> but they just might not be expressing that to you. And I don't know why I'm feeling that. I'm just feeling that, that, that you're not getting the praise you truly deserve, but it may actually be because you're so humanitarian that you don't require the praise. You're not doing it for the praise. You're just doing it for... It makes you feel good when you feel someone's energy raise. And because you're not expecting that praise, you're not getting the praise. But behind closed doors, you are getting that praise. Let's get a little bit more information on what people are saying about you. I'm gonna pull a little charm here. Oh, travel. Again, I did mention people feel like you are sorry the little hiccup there people feel like you are expanding beyond where you are now again people feel that in your energy people are also talking about it they may even be saying like part number one isn't going to be in this office for long or the part number one isn't going to still be in this position in this company for long they're going up and up and up and up i also feel for some of you it may be that you get transferred if you are part of a company or corporation, you get transferred elsewhere for a better position and people are talking about it. But again, if this is something like online, social media wise, you know, people are saying like, part number one is expanding, part number one may not be living in this town for that long, part number one may not be um, driving that particular car for much longer or living in that particular house for much longer. They can just see you going places and they're talking about that. And that's so beautiful as well. Even if you don't want to move out of your, you know, your town or anything like that, you know, maybe you've got family very close to you. People are saying like, they ain't gonna be here for long. They can see that you're, you're larger than this. Now with the dice, I wanna see whether I can actually get a particular area in life where people are actually talking about you, okay? So let's have a little look what we've got. Eighth house, power. People are talking about your power. Libra, your fairness, and Saturn, your career. Okay, that's what I feel here. People are talking about the power that you have in your career. It makes me think that whatever you're doing when it comes to your career, your status, okay, because Saturn isn't just career, it's also status. I feel like people see how fair you are. Okay, make this make sense to you. Okay, because I'm not picking up on anything in particular here. With the Libra energy, you know, I'm picking up on things like aesthetics. I'm picking up on somebody who's very good at communication, very fair with their communication, okay? Libra is an air sign, another air sign. We've got air, we've got Mercury, we've got Libra here. We've got Saturn here with the world. Okay, and we've got Saturn here as well. People are speaking very fondly about what you're doing career-wise. Speaking very fondly about the power and the status that you are building for yourself. Libra is fair. Libra is polite. Libra doesn't like to SHIT talk and I think a lot of people are saying a lot of positive things about you. I think a lot of people are saying a lot of positive things about you because they can see transformations that you've made. 
it's like they, they've watched you start from small and they've seen you expand and there's they, they can't say anything negative about that because what you set out to do you're doing i want to say that anybody who feels like what you are doing or your the way that you help people saying that you are manipulative in some way i want to say they are very few few and far in between there's not many people who are shit talking you we all know we've got haters here and there but there's i feel like a lot of people if they are thinking like mm, palm number one you know what are they actually up to is this you know this kindness this generosity and this need to help others real they're keeping that to themselves because libra energy keeps negative things to themselves it's like a lot of people are staying quiet and they are watching and they are trying to work out how real what you're doing actually is and then the other people who know that what you're that, that you're real you're real what you get is what you see <laughs> for the jlo for you they're just saying positive things about you libra is also a sign that is not messy everything is very balanced well thought out and i think people have seen you go through transformations here with the eighth house in a very clean way I want to say it's the energy of how does palm number one do it? I want to say people may have seen you lose assets, people may have seen you leave relationships, people may have, you know, seen you comment on struggles online, you know, if you're somebody who's very vocal online, but you do it with such grace and gratitude and you always balance out the negative with the positive and this is what makes you all of this who you are and why you're so inspirational because not many people can do that. It's very difficult. You have to be a certain type of person with a certain level of awareness and trust in the universe to do that. And as I look at my screen, my camera is at 88%. So we've got more of that power energy. You have gained so much power from your weaknesses and people have seen that and they think it's beautiful. I want to say as well, you're somebody that every time you have a knockdown, you stand back up physically more beautiful as well. Because Libra is about those physical aesthetics. It's ruled by Venus. So I want to say through all this struggle, you just seem to glow up. And again, I think a lot of people don't know how you do it. But a lot of people actually think it's so inspirational. Somebody could be in a really dark place, meet you for a coffee, not realise that you've been through something very similar and you've got back up and you've gained from it and then they go home and they just feel so much better because they realise that they, they don't have to go downhill, they can go uphill like you did. I also want to say you may be somebody who is building new personal relationships as well and you're going to be building those relationships on a different basis this time. You're going to be building those relationships on values. You're going to be meeting people who have the same kind of attitude to life as you do. The people who have the same kind of goals that you do. You may be meeting new people in work. Who inspire you to be better as well. You know, you guys inspire each other. You get higher and higher and higher because of this. But yeah, that is what I'm seeing there. Now let's go into your current most powerful strength that you can take forward with you today. And when it comes to this section of the reading, this may be something that you know, or it actually may be something that you don't see. So we have Transformation with Archangel Zadkiel. Thank you Zadkiel for supporting me to transform my past challenges. And that is very much a Saturn energy that we have here, okay? Saturn on the dice, Saturn on the world card. And that is what you've done. That is why you're so inspirational. Because you have taken the darkness and you've transformed it into light. And you share this. Whether this be in your career or whether this be with like the people around you. Whether this just be as like a hobby on social media. This is what you do. Like you help people gain their own strength. You help people push through challenging situations. With the purple here as well in the card I just feel creativity with this. Also makes me think of like an indigo child. I don't know whether you've been. Um, whether you resonate with being an indigo but it makes me think of you taking challenging situations and creatively expressing it in a way that's very powerful for the listener or the person that you're with if that is a friend or a family member or something like that also it does make me think of you being very creative on social media 
And then we've also got boundaries here. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? And this, this may be actually something that's coming up for you because you are expanding and you are having to be, you are having to create like a balance between giving your energy out freely and protecting your, mm. I'm feeling you, I'm feeling you guys expanding and you realising that you need to put more protection in place. And maybe you're feeling very guilty about this. Or potentially not feeling that you have the power of protection. Now you have Saturn here twice. Now Saturn is the ultimate planet of protection because the planet is protected by those rings. You cannot get through, you can't get to Saturn without being smashed to pieces through those rings, okay? Saturn energy, Capricorn energy is highly, highly protected because of this. And maybe it's believing in the fact that you are very highly protected and you're powerful enough to protect your energy. If there are any haters, maybe they are. Um, you do feel like, well, you're getting a little bit of evil eye here and there, but one of your strengths is protection. I gain a lot of privacy with you as well. You know, you're very open. You do tend to keep certain things private. But for some reason, I really want to say, the things that you feel are really private, you can creatively generate that into content or inspiration to help other people. Where am I going with this one? It's like I see you thinking like that that's personal to me, but it can still be made into something very creatively, which keeps your privacy, but you still, you can still give that message to help other people. Oh God, I really hope that makes sense. And with here, with Lemuria here, creating heaven on earth, it's happening, that, that is literally what you're trying to do. You're trying to create harmony in your own life and sharing that with other people. Like that is your purpose here. And this card's coming out in the strength section because this is exactly what you're going to gain if you haven't gained this already. It's that freedom. It's that love for life and it's feeling like you actually have a purpose here. And people are going to see the purpose in you if they haven't already because you've got such a good heart. You've been through so much that you're very strong when it comes to your views, your morals. And not in a stubborn way, it's just you know yourself. You know yourself so deeply. Like you have a very special knowing of yourself that not many people have and so many people can you know act and pretend that they know themselves and I can just see this angel with the horn staring at me okay the angel with the horn I always laugh when I say that because it sounds so rude but I want to say because you know yourself you never have to worry about whether what you say gets misunderstood okay because we are living in a time of things like cancel culture People love to jump on like um, posts on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you know, they love to jump in the comments and give their two cents. It's very easy for people to give hate as well when, you know, everything's working online and things like that. But I want to say like, be, be so sure in the knowing of yourself that whatever you say is going to be understood and it's going to be taken very positively because you know yourself, you know your morals, you're very um, strong in the knowing of what you've been through and what you want to express from this, that you're not going to say anything that's going to cause some kind of major uproar. That's like a little mini message that I picked up on here when I just saw that just screaming at me. The angel of the horn is Famer as well. Like this is Famer, the goddess Famer. She is basically like the media. You know, she can create a ruckus if she wants to. If you are kind to Famer, she is only going to spread good news in your favour. If you are unkind to Famer, she is going to drop some SHIT that is going to kill your reputation. Now, all you need to do is stay true to yourself, stay pure. Stay in that energy of wanting to raise yourself whilst raising the people around you and you're all good. You're not going to say anything out of turn. But yeah, this is a beautiful pile here. And there's most certainly so much success coming for you. 
just stay confident within yourself. And I want to also say as well, Saturn energy is quite slow moving. Okay, it takes time. So if there's anybody watching this who's thinking, gosh, like, if it is to do with social media, if it is to do with, um, you know, starting your own business or anything like that, um, even if it's making new friends that are more in line with your values, it's happening. It, it may just be happening very slowly because what you're doing is very important. And when you gain the recognition and gain what you want out of this, it, it's very important that you stand strong in that position because we need you. <laughs> Let's put it that way, we need you. We can't see you fall. You've got a very, a very important place on this earth and in this lifetime and maybe you, you're taking the slower, more strategic route because when you reach the top, it's going to be... It's going to be everything you want, but because you've learned all the lessons in a methodical way, you're not going to be overwhelmed and you're not going to give this big opportunity that's coming for you up. Now you did choose the rose and I did want to explain what the meaning of the flower that you chose is. Now, as we all know, the rose is the symbol of love and beauty. And I do think you're very... As I said, like, you, you are, people can feel the love radiating from you, but also because your soul is so pure and beautiful, you, ex ex um, you expel that beauty on the outside. I do say that the biggest beauty tip, you know, the most prominent beauty tip anyone needs is to have a good soul. Because as human beings, we are fine-tuned to see dangers. If you are ill, for instance, you know, your physical body will show signs on the outside. You know, this person is ill so that other people can see to stay away so they don't get ill. And it's exactly the same when it comes to somebody having a negative soul, somebody being very harmful to others. This is going to show in their physical appearance. If you lie, if you cheat, your body is going to show signs externally for people to stay away. And this is so legit. And this is why we have glow-ups when we have spiritual awakenings. This is why we have glow-ups when we start understanding ourselves at an emotional level. Because when we start clearing out our toxicity, being true to ourselves and being purer souls that want to help elevate other people, we do become more attractive so that we can magnetise other people into our lives so that we can help them, okay? So, yeah, you will be an extremely beautiful person physically because your soul is so beautiful. The rose also talks about courage and protection because that rose has those thorns to protect the beautiful flower and you are heavily protected. I mentioned with the Saturn energy here, okay, you have the ability to put up these energetic boundaries if you need to, okay, as you expand. People aren't going to be able to infiltrate your energy. You have the power to put in that type of prote protection and put in those boundaries. You may also be letting people go because, you know, the people who don't agree with your way of life or the people who are very jealous and hating on the success that you are gaining, you don't need them in your life, okay? There may be a lot of people that you're cutting out at the moment. The rose does also talk about sacrifice because of the red colour, okay? The red represents blood, it talks about sacrifice, and I do think you have sacrificed a lot to be where you are today. Okay, pile number one. I'm going to leave that there. Honestly, beautiful pile. So, so happy for you guys. Love you so much, appreciate you so much. And if you did love this video and you did appreciate this video, please drop me a like. And if you feel comfortable to do so, comment down below. Let me know your story. But if you want to keep that kind of SHIT private, guys, I'd love to just hear from you. Say hello, tell me what pile you claim. Really, really appreciate your comments. I really love hearing from you. And if you do like content like this and you want to see more of it, please subscribe. And hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post a brand new pick a card reading. It's usually once a week. I may do a bonus reading. Um, but yes, I love you guys so much. I appreciate you guys so much. You are beautiful, beautiful people. And I shall see you in your next reading. Goodbye. Hello there, gorgeous pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Now let's have a look and see how people describe you to others. And to begin with, I want to find out what people actually think about you. Now, we got the bully and the virgin. Now these are two very polarizing energies. 
here. We've got the power with the bully, okay? And don't get that twisted. I'm not saying that bullies actually have power. And by the way, I'm not saying that people think you're a bully because I can see the interpretation of this um, with a slightly different air here. But the bully is somebody who expresses a lot of power and the virgin is somebody who is very soft, um, like an inner strength. You know, you can, it's like, like, when I think about this card, the virgin, I think about the phrase water off a duck's back. It's like, all you feel is love and love conquers all. So you have this energy of being very soft. But your softness isn't because you are soft, it's not because you are weak, it's because you are very strong on the inside. You only allow the things in life to infiltrate your energy that's worth it. You only retaliate when it's worth it. Now I think your inner strength is why we're getting these polarizing energies coming out for the way that people think about you because I feel like you have so much love in your heart and such a strong inner strength that potentially your ability to shut people out, your ability to not allow people who are mean or lesser than you energetically to infiltrate your energy may come across to some as being very confronting. I actually really feel with you that you're somebody who says, I just keep myself to myself and people just can't leave me alone or they can't stop confronting me or they can't stop blaming me for things that have absolutely nothing to do with me. And I actually resonate with that because I feel the same about myself. So, I have a very strong connection to that kind of energy and I, it's like a scapegoat kind of energy I'm getting here. Like your strength intimidates. And as you can tell, I'm talking about this and I'm stuttering a little bit because I'll be real, this set of cards really stumped me. <laughs> and I do think I'm gaining this polarizing energy because I think for you, you do have some people around you who are very positive. And think very positively about your energy but then on the other side you do have people around you that do hold like jealousy and are very intimidated by you we all have lovers we all have haters and i do think with you it is like a little mixture of both and that shit ain't on you you know i don't want anyone watching this and thinking oh great you're telling me that i've got like a bunch of haters i mean you may already realize you know you may well realize that you have a lot of people who are very jealous about you and whenever you have haters man it's a compliment so please, anyone watching this, take it as a compliment. Now, the positive side. I feel like people see you as somebody who, when there are issues in life, you quietly solve them. When you're feeling more emotional, when you're in a more of a difficult place in life, you don't express it. You never look messy to other people. You just hold this inner strength at all times. And people see that. And you may think that people don't notice your strength. You may think that people may see you as more meek, but they don't, they see the strength in you. And they really admire that. I can feel so many people around you thinking, gosh, I wish I was as strong as palm number two. It's like, no matter how hard you're hit externally, you maintain that purity of heart and spirit here with the Virgin. No matter what SHIT anyone throws at you, you walk out unscathed because of that inner strength. Now on the other side, the flip side when it comes to like the hater side of things, I feel like people see your strength as very confronting and it's just because your strength intimidates them. They do not have the same inner strength as you do and God forbid, if you ever externalize that inner strength towards them, I mean, they would be shot down in seconds. And this is what people fear around you. I actually think people fear you and you have no idea. I think you're very choosy with where you put your energy as well. And you are part number two, which makes me think that there is some correlation here with relationships. 
I feel you've been very reserved with your energy and the haters not realising that your distance from them isn't because you don't like to be close to people. They may feel like it's like, oh, pile number two just likes to keep themselves to themselves. Pile number two um, keeps the distance because maybe they even think that you're stubborn in some way, but it's not that at all. It's the fact that you are so strong within yourself that you won't allow other people to tarnish that positive, strong energy that you hold. And I really hope this makes sense to you. Now, you guys had so much Aries energy come out here. So I wouldn't be surprised if you were an Aries sun, moon or rising, but I really wanna say we're looking at like 10th house Aries or even Aries Saturn here because this is your status. This is what other people, or the way that other people describe you. So when I look at this bully card, if you look at the forehead, you do see the Aries symbol there. And I noticed that straight away. And then whilst I was pre-shuffling, I actually also pulled the Aries card here. And further on in the reading, we do also have another Aries card coming up. So heavy, heavy Aries and fire energy. And Aries energy is very independent. It's strong, it's brave, and it's passionate. And I really want to say that you are so passionate about the relationships where people are good to you. Okay, where there's nice even exchange. I sense you having a very strong sense of self-love and self-worth. And again, that intimidates so many people because they do not share that. They do not love themselves like you love yourself. And again, that SHIT ain't on you, it's on them. But also you're very brave. You know, when you pull away from people or when you won't confront somebody in an argument, that is strength and that is bravery. Okay, and I do think sometimes people can misunderstand you pulling away as like some kind of retreat. It's not. It's strength and it's bravery. Now, I don't know whether you have got, I don't know whether this energy is actually surrounding family. I feel like potentially for some of you, you may have a large family where there's a lot going on. I could just see the Kardashians here, okay, a lot of family members, a lot going on, um, the dynamic is pretty big and it's pretty complicated, but then for some of you, I also feel that potentially your family and your ancestry plays a very big role in this, this kind of polarising energy here, maybe you had a parent that expected you to be weaker, expected you to be more of a pushover and because you had that strong Aries energy within you and you confronted the SHIT they created some kind of confusion when it came to your power and your status they created a different persona for you than what your persona was and I really do feel with this pile that maybe earlier on in life you were very confused about who you were and because of this confusion because you were not being taken seriously by like the family or maybe still aren't being taken seriously by the family it caused you to do that delve deep into that um, self-discovery and self-knowing so that you can be very solid in who you are whenever the family confronts you or whenever anyone else confronts you now in life i want to say there may be family members, friends of the family, depending on what your situation is, whether you have a large family and there's still drama going on left and right like the Kardashians or whether it is this like family member or maybe a couple of family members who um, were intimidated by your strength and didn't expect you to have that level of strength. You've grown out of that. You've grown beyond them and people can see that. I think even the people in your life who talk you down as being weaker than you are they really do think of you as a stronger person the people who verbalize or treat you like you're weaker do that because it's a defense mechanism they think they feel your strength and they think if you believe that you are weak you are not going to confront them but that is not going to work don't ever sit at home and think why does everyone use me as a scapegoat? Why do I get blamed for things that I don't even have any involvement in? 
why do people think I'm such a pushover? Like, they don't. They think that you are strong. They can see the power within you and that is why they confront you in that way. And for the people who are really decent in your life, like they see you as someone who's really strong and somebody who influences them to be stronger and make more strong decisions in their life. I really hear like power to the people with you, okay? So it makes me think of, is it trade union? Like when in a corporation you have somebody who kind of works for the people, fights for the right of the workers, I see you as being that kind of person. Like if a friend comes to you, for instance, and I know somebody in my life who's recently just had like a major pay cut. <laughs> and at the same time as the cost of living is going up and they get this major pay cut when it comes to their um, commission. And it's a really sneaky thing for the company to do. And you're the kind of person to say, look, this ain't right. You need to push for more. You have every right to go up to the management and say, look, like this, this is not going to work for me. What can you do for me? Okay, you have a very motivational air, and it is this Aries energy as well. Like you're extremely motivational because of this inner strength that you have built through confrontation throughout the years. People also see you as someone who is extremely inspirational. Somebody who goes for what is right, regardless of the consequences. You work very hard on yourself. And people do see you as high value. The people who are intimidated by you may switch that up and say you've got too high standards. But again, you know that ain't the truth. You have high value, so you deserve the best. I actually feel with this part that you're somebody who does gain a lot of comfort in life. Now, by that I mean potentially you're somebody who has achieved a lot and there's a lot of jealousy around you because of what you've achieved and the, the financial comfort I want to say. And if you're somebody who doesn't consider yourself as very financial well off, I do want to say that people look at you as somebody who has a lot of comfort around them. Somebody who has a very comfortable lifestyle. And again, it's because you don't expect any less. I remember Jessa Reed on the Soberish podcast saying that when she was a, an addict, okay, I won't actually mention the D-R-U-G, but when she was an addict, she, she came from like a trailer park. But then there were other addicts that came from more wealthier families. Now, the wealthier family peoples, <laughs> the wealthier family peoples, the people from the wealthier families ha had higher expectations for themselves. Everyone was an addict, but the people from the wealthier families had those high expectations. I don't know a life where I live without a roof over my head, and I don't know a life where I live without a car and a job. So, even though they were in exactly the same place as Jessa, these addicts with wealthier backgrounds and I mean they, their, their parents would cut off their credit cards okay this is the, the, these are people from different places in life different ways of life in the same situation yet the people with the wealthier backgrounds with like the highest standards because they've never known any differently always had a job always had a car and always managed to have a roof over their head somehow yet Jessa on the other side who came from like a trailer park she wasn't used to having those high standards. She was used to, you know, loss in her life. And even though she's in the same place as these wealthier people, she didn't have the same as those people. And I mean, later on in life, I mean, she's very successful now, of course. But later on in life, she observed that and realised that there's method to that madness. It's manifestation and it's having expectancies for yourself. And obviously self-love and self-respect come very highly in that as well to achieve this. And this is something that you have. Self-love, self-respect and expectations for yourself. So even if you don't feel like the most abundant person in the world at all times, people actually see you as being very abundant. Now, what do people say about you? You must be somebody who speaks your truth because you've got the Ace of Swords here. <clears throat> a lot of people say don't mess with part number two 
I filled that with the Ace of Swords. Don't underestimate part number two. You have that energy of not needing to confront. Yet, I think there's a few people around you that have seen you confront others. And it's a shock at how strong, passionate and well articulated you are in those situations. True power doesn't need to show that power and wear that power on their sleeve. True power doesn't need to walk into a bar and go, right, who's looking at me the wrong way? True power walks in with this silent power. It's like, you don't have to be a big, you don't have to be big, but it's like the big, friendly, giant energy. Like, you know you're large. You know you're strong. You know that you can cause damage. So you do everything in your power to not cause that damage. But my gosh, you will use it if you need to. And I, I do feel like there's people around you who see this. And they're like, look, do not mess with pawn number two. Because I've seen pawn number two in their power. Mm -mm. Don't go there. I think some people may gossip about you. But I think it's because you have like a level of privacy. That people just like to fill in the gaps. But bear in mind, the Ace of Swords has come out with the Six of Cups here. So ultimately, this is very positive. But I do think maybe the family members, I'm picking up on the family members again, may talk a little bit of SHIT behind your back, but again, it's just intimidation. It will never ever ruin your reputation because you've got the beautiful Six of Cups here because the close people around you know how loving and how giving you are. I feel like you've got a lot of strong friendships around you Potentially these friendships are people that you have been friends with from childhood. So you've really invested in the people around you. I also feel with the Six of Cups here that people actually talk about the childlike beauty within you. People will say Pond number two is so kind. People say Pond number two is so generous. Even if people say like, I don't really understand Pond number two because Pond number two doesn't give a lot away. I feel like there's people in your corner saying, oh, I know part number two really well. They're so funny, they're so childlike, they're so generous. But don't mess with part number two. Because they're a lot more intelligent and strong and brave than you think. That's the kind of energy I'm getting here with what people actually say about you. I'm going to pull a chart. Sis. Okay, here we go. Look, it's the, it's the polarising energy again. It's the theatre symbol with the sad face on one side and the happy face, oh, sorry, happy face on the other. There you go. <laughs> it's that polarising energy. I don't think you give enough away and people fill in the blanks. But you don't care. Because <laughs> you only care about how the people closest to you feel about you, what they think about you. And really, that's all that matters. I want to say that you're extremely loved by all. The people who are positive in your life love you so much and they value you so much. And then the people who are more negative in your life, they still have love for you. It's like an obsession with you. It's, it's that fact that they love you. They deep down really admire everything that you are, but you intimidate them. And they have these defense mechanisms. Okay, and I wanted to roll the dice as well to see whether I can pinpoint any particular area in your life that people talk about. Pluto is your strength. Pluto is strength. Tenth house is your status and Capricorn. Capricorn is the ruler of the tenth house. It is the ruler of status. Okay, it's also very stoic. It doesn't need to show off. It just is. It just is power. It just is success. It just is abundance. And you're somebody who's worked very hard on understanding yourself on a deep Plutonian level here. Pete, you must be very successful when it comes to your career as well because Capricorn and the 10th house and Pluto, man, that is real success right there. I did mention for some of you, you may live a very financially comfortable lifestyle. And again, this really intimidates other people, potentially family members who just haven't done the work you've done and aren't doing so well for themselves. I don't want to say your loving nature does tend to give energy to these people who kind of 
are a little bit more, you know, S-H-I-T-T-Y on your energy because you have that love and you have that level of devotion and care for people, but you also have your limits. Again, everything in this pile is polarizing. Even the number two is polarizing, it's two ones. It's also back and forth giving these people a chance and having to pull your energy back, giving these people a chance and having to pull your energy back. You are good on your own. I really want to say you pulling back completely is probably the best way to help these people because you've built a level of self-respect for yourself. These people who aren't showing you that level of respect need to show you that level of respect to come back into your life but my gosh there are people out there who have so much respect for you they can see your power i think you are the main b-i-t-c-h in a lot of people's lives you may be somebody that a lot of people say like oh yeah pile number two is my best friend pile number two is my support system i, I hear that as well if you're somebody watching this and you haven't had ultimate career success, people are talking about how successful you're going to be or how successful they think you are or how successful you are if you have already reached that level of success and achievement. I really want to say with you guys, it's very CEO kind of energy. The CEO stays calm in difficult situations. When something in the company goes T-I-T-S, it's the CEO that gets the, um, the negative exposure. It's the CEO who has to hold the company together. It's the CEO that is the face of the company. You could be the face of the family. It doesn't matter whether you are the eldest or the youngest, whether you're a parent or a child. Wherever you fall in the family, you are the main B-I-T-C-H in that family. You're the one everyone comes to, but also you're the scapegoat because of this as well. And I think, again, it's that polarizing energy. You've built a level of self-respect for yourself. You've built a level of self-respect when it comes to your social life. You're cutting out the people who don't respect you. Guys, I think it's just really understanding that you hold the power even if people try to diminish it because they're intimidated by it let's have a look at your current most powerful strength to take forward with you and take away with you from this reading today and we have peaceful warrior which the warrior is that Aryan energy again that aries energy and that is you the peaceful warrior you fight for your rights, you fight for what's right in general, but you don't feel the need to do it in a messy way. You have this quiet power. You're the kind of person that walks in a room and people don't look because you've got like massive hair and you're wearing a big glittery dress. I mean, you may like wearing those kind of things, but people don't look at you because of the way you look, because you're trying to stand out. You just stand out. And I do think this is why people can kind of sort of on the negative side attack you because you have this really strong power that just intimidates. I wanted to say Scorpio Midheaven as well as an Aries Midheaven here or Aries Mid 10th um, house or Scorpio 10th house. But Aries is ruled by Mars and Scorpio is traditionally ruled by Mars. So of course I want to say those two signs for your 10th house of status. Aries is physical Martian strength and Scorpio is psychological Martian strength. Now you may have both of these or you may have one of these very strongly. Look at that 10th house, guys. Look at that midheaven, look at that 10th house. Please also look at where Saturn is because Saturn could be in Aries or in Scorpio for you guys. Very powerful placement. You ooze power. And Archangel Ariel says, thank you, Ariel, for helping me stand my ground with peace. And that is what you do. I really feel like you're some kind of leader, some kind of manager, or you're working up to that. 
because you've reached and sorry that's my stomach making crazy noises it always happens okay if you know me you know that my stomach is going to speak my stomach tries to speak over me <laughs> but i feel like you're in training for some kind of very strong leadership position if you're not in a very strong leadership position because you have that level of natural strength and power but also that diplomatic energy where you don't have to physically fight to win you don't have to physically be a mess to win you could be in a bar and you don't have to throw chairs tables i don't know how strong are you throwing tables at a bar like you don't have to throw somebody over a table in a bar to prove your point all you have to do is use your mental agility your facts because you know yourself so you know your facts are legit and use like those piercing eyes to get your point across i want to say you may have very defensive eyes and by defensive eyes it's, it's not it's not a insult by any means it just means that your eyes give i take no s-h-i-t i can resonate with that also i had um well my ex he is now my ex <laughs> maybe you'll hear the story about it one day it's a pretty oh it's a pretty intense story guys i'll be real but maybe you'll hear about that when it's relevant but we were we were talking about our physical appearances and talking about the energy that we give off just by looking into our eyes now my ex very innocent eyes the kind of eyes that you trust okay puppy dog eyes because he is somebody who hasn't hasn't really been able to take control of his his life through his childhood He's been very controlled by the people around him. He's a Libra rising. And I'm not saying any crap about Libra risings at all. But Libra risings who are like a little bit underdeveloped, they do tend to, and as I look at the clock, 66% on the battery and number six is like that Venusian energy. It's the lovers in the tarot. The lovers does represent Gemini, um, but also it does represent like kind of um, Venusian kind of relationship kind of energy um, so Libra is ruled by Venus look I make connection I know that's a very long connection to make it's like not very specific but I always like to make connections okay it's what I do um but yeah Libra that's a little bit un underdeveloped um, they don't have a sense of self they live their life through the eyes of other people and unfortunately that's what my ex does <laughs> I was gonna say what's doing does so he has a very childlike look in his eyes. Now, it's very misleading because he's actually very promiscuous and a little bit sneaky. But because of that kind of energy where they don't have control of themselves, innocent look in the eyes. And when it came to my eyes, I thought I was going to get a lovely compliment. But instead I got, um, he actually pointed to a poster on the, on the wall that was actually on the gate, sorry, to the park. And it was about criminals. And it was basically these really evil eyes. <laughs> Um, which were basically saying like, just P.I. double S.R. Like, I've taken no shit. Yes, there's power in those eyes. You know, like, I will, I will destroy you if you step up to me. I will destroy you if you cross my boundaries kind of thing. But at the same time, they were very unapproachable eyes as well. So, you may have the kind of eyes that say don't, I don't take no S.H.I.T. Um, but also... If you are somebody <laughs> watching this and you may be, you know, I think you're very career driven for starters, but if you're somebody watching this and you are a little bit more single, or maybe you're looking to expand your friends group or something like this, and this won't be for everybody. This is just something that I resonate with and I want to put it out there for some people um, if you do resonate with this, because we are in a time where a lot of people are falling away for people we are in a time of shedding you know we are all ascending and some of us are ascending faster than others so some people aren't making the cut when it comes to our friends groups or our lovers and things like that so you may be in a phase where you don't have as many friends around you or maybe you are a single person because no one is of your level yet no one has reached your level of ascension yet and you're thinking why aren't people approaching me um it may be because you have that very strong look in your eyes, like a defensive look in your eyes, because so many people have taken the PIWS out of you that it's just naturally ingrained in your soul. Like, I am protecting my soul by all means. 
and it could be that where people aren't approaching you I've personally been going through that myself it just means that I need to be more I need to approach more and show people my soft side hey yeah I take no SHIT but I'm a really good person and I'm really caring and um, I actually have a lot to give I'm just chatting out of my arse now and I know what I'm trying to say but it's just not coming out the right way I really hope you know what I mean but guys you've got so much power and we have Anna grandmother of Jesus seeding the light laying foundations the divine plan and the 10th house and Capricorn energy is all about those foundations Pluto energy does represent the underworld but also represents like the roots the soil where the seed is planted and those roots grow the stability the foundation of the plant or the foundation of the tree lives in the soil you are heading for a power position and when you reach that power position you need to have those foundations those roots so strong and solid in the ground you have been jumping hurdles throughout your life for this you may be watching this thinking people are looking at me like i've got no power no it's the opposite the people who you think are looking at you like you've got no power feel the power know the power and they're intimidated and their ego attacks you because of that but the people close to you the people who respect you know your power and they know exactly where you're going and you're going high you're going to higher places and i love that now you chose the lily and i do want to end off the reading by talking about what the lily represents and the lily represents purity and we did talk about the virgin here okay that combines very nicely with the virgin it's it's a pure soul it's a pure heart and spirit the lily also represents fertility and fertility doesn't just mean um having babies it can be the growth growth when it comes to work the fact that you create a life on your terms because you do have that very strong aries energy the bravery and the passion to go for what you want if you are somebody who has that financial comfort you've gained that through your ability to create that ability to fertilize your grounds fertilize your crops not take any notice of the crops of the people that are trying to push you down because they're intimidated you've shut those people out and you've decided to fertilize your crops and bring put all of your energy into your crops and you've grown sustenance and stability from that the lily also represents the patient and nourishment of the mother and i do think this could be something to do with the status that you have in your family you are the most powerful in your family you are you're very special you're either even the black sheep in the family no matter how big or small the family is for some this makes you the ultimate mother of the family for some this makes you the ultimate leader of the family but then for some it's very intimidating but no matter what you are the person that people go to whether they go to you for help advice structure support or whether they come to you to just scapegoat you and take it out on you either way all of that resides from the power that you have the status that you have within your family unit some are intimidated some respect it keep doing you keep pulling your energy away from the people who don't show you the level of respect that you deserve and keep fertilizing and nourishing those who do give you that respect and part number two i'm gonna leave that there I always get a little bit confused whenever there's polarizing energies so i do apologize if i wasn't as articulate as young woman says articulate as usual am i articulate usually probably not <laughs> but i want to say a big massive thank you for watching i hope this resonated and if it did please drop me a like comment down below if you feel comfortable to share your story and if you want to stay a little bit more proud of it just say hey also, tell me which power you claimed. I love hearing from you regardless what the comment is. 
If you like content like this, please subscribe because I absolutely, 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 absolutely adore making content like this for you. And I want to make more of it for you. And to do so, the channel needs to grow. I need to fertilise the channel. Put all the nourishment in the channel. I do, to be fair. I do love this channel so, so much. And yeah, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I post a brand new pick a card reading. It's usually once a week. Sometimes there's a bonus. I'll be real with you, there's not always a bonus. But you will gain or receive <laughs> a pick a card reading once a week. And card number two. I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you. And I shall see you in your next reading. Bye bye. Hi, part number three, welcome to your reading. Let's have a look and see how do other people describe you to others. And to begin with, I want to look into what other people actually think about you. So for this we have addict and student. Now, I really feel this is very much around the addiction to success the addiction to work, the addiction to things that are like fitness. Now, for some of you, you may have a very addicted nature in general. You may have previously had addictions that have been a little bit more toxic, okay? Isn't for everybody. If you have, you know, no shame. If you have like addictions to things that are positive, you naturally just have an addictive nature. I didn't realise until later on in my life that I have an addictive nature. In the past, I have been addicted to drinking. Nothing major, it was just very, very young in my life. I was, I was, I, I drank a lot more than I should have at a very young age. And then I transformed that addiction to diet. I became very addicted to a particular diet and then it transformed into fitness. Heavy, heavily addicted to fitness. So my addiction started out as being very toxic and later on in life they started to transform into being more positive addictions either way i have an addictive nature i have an addictive personality i can't really change that i just need to change the things that i'm addicted in and i feel you guys will resonate with that and if you don't fully resonate with it have a little thinky poos about some of the things that you choose to do in life Okay, have a little thinky poos about your work, for instance. You may not realise that you're addicted to work, but an addiction doesn't have to be negative. An addiction doesn't have to destroy your life. You may find that there are healthy addictions that you have and that, oh yes, I do have an addictive personality. There ain't nothing wrong with having an addictive personality. I actually think it is a massive tick and a massive pro to have an addictive personality because it means that you are very thorough and I do I'm not gonna say this I actually have a theory I really feel like addictive personalities can be related to the fixed signs in the zodiac so that is Taurus Leo Scorpio and Aquarius okay they're the fixed signs because when you have your mind set on something, you like to achieve that. So you may have those placements somewhere very prominent. Okay, look for um, fixed signs in like Saturn in the 10th house. But I also have a theory that the Earth signs in general, so that's Taurus, obviously that's a fixed sign, and um, we have Virgo, which is a mutable sign, and Capricorn, which is a cardinal sign. I do feel like the Earth signs do have the tendency to have very addictive personalities as well, because it is that kind of like... It's that nature to need to grow and it's that nature to need to succeed and people who have that nature do tend to have an addictive personality. <laughs> okay. Now, I do think a lot of people see you kind of, I wanna say being very overwhelming as such, but again, this doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's like you overwhelm people with your success it could be with your knowledge, it could be with your strength, because everything that you achieve, you've worked very hard at, okay? Because you've got the student here as well. I feel like people think of you as somebody who is highly intelligent and highly powerful. I actually wanna say for you guys that people look at you and think, my gosh, those genes are good. You've got the kind of genes that people want to procreate with, okay? That one's a little bit random, but I'm really picking up on that. On the positive side, people see you as somebody who always succeeds when they set out to do something. 
they see you constantly going at it <laughs> whatever it may be whatever you need um, whatever you want you achieve it and you achieve it not through luck you know people don't see you achieving it through luck they don't see you achieving it because they think you're happy-go-lucky and you're like a wheeler dealer and like you're manipulative they see you achieve things through due diligence through due diligence and hard work i think you have an energy that really inspires people but your level is just so high that i think a lot of people think that it that they they want a bit of what you've got but being like you is very unachievable because you are at such a high level guys i mean i've got to say it and this may be a massive ego boost for you but so it should because it definitely looks like whatever level you've reached man you've worked for it i do think that people who are more on like the hater side than the lover side think that you're a bit ott that people may think that you're not living the life that you love because you're so busy trying to be successful for material reasons which in your case it's not like you have this kind of like earthy energy here i really do sense a virgo energy i would not be surprised if you have like a virgo sun moon rising mid heaven or saturn here okay so bear that in mind look for that in your chart because virgo energy is really massive here but i think some people just don't get it and I think they think that you're running yourself into the ground. Maybe you're working towards things that don't truly make you happy. Well, what makes you happy is very different to what makes the next person happy. What makes the next person happy is just to sit on the sofa, watch Netflix, and just eat Maltesers. That's their level of happiness. That's what makes them feel like they're living life. You're not like that. You've got a lot more energy, more energy than most, and you have a drive and your drive to succeed is what lights you up, what brings you the same level of happiness and comfort than the person who sits watching Netflix eating Maltesers. Now, I really sense love. <laughs> love came in when I was talking about Netflix and Maltesers. And it makes me think that there is somebody in your energy, whether they be past or present, that wants you to calm down they want you to be a little bit more like them they want to have more downtime with you they feel like your desire to achieve is pulling you away from them and i do want to say that this person is just a very different breed to you now if this is an ex you've done the right thing by making them an ex and this must be coming up for a reason because potentially you still think about this person or they still prominently think about you you you're on a different level to them different things make you happy than what makes them happy it was supposed to end you can be friends of course but there is no compromise i want to say there is no compromise and on their behalf they they couldn't understand your way of life and they didn't want to understand your way of life now if this is somebody current i want to say the same kind of thing although i want to say that if you're still together you can make this work by just switching a few things and compromising both of you not just you not just them and as i say this i look at the um the camera screen and it's 55 percent um like camera is at 55 percent charge <laughs> why do i not know how to say that and number 55 does talk about change because the number five is all about change it's also about cutting the things out that are very stale so um for some of you it may be cutting somebody out who is trying to kind of hold you back and slow you down um okay let me recenter. you may naturally find a few difficulties when it comes to love and closer relationships i even sense for some of you like a mother saying calm down or even don't be such a perfectionist and things like that you need to have a holiday you're just in a different place than they are don't ever feel like you need to slow down because people are telling you to slow down although i do sense that part number three is you do have a very strong sense of self and a very strong persona so you're not going to sacrifice what you enjoy to please other people but you may consider it sometimes and think hmm do i need to slow down and then when you do slow down you may not feel as happy because what lights you up in light life is very different to what lights you know maybe your your partner or your you know mother's um idea of life i also want to say on the negative side if you do ever occur any haters 
people can misconstrue your success or your intelligence and drive as arrogance, again, that SHIT is on them. You have worked for everything you have achieved and you are working for everything you want to achieve in life. So sometimes people may think that you're a little bit arrogant, but it is just because you intimidate people. You are a level up from most and they just don't believe they can achieve the level of success or the level of intelligence that you have achieved. Okay, you know, you've done the work. If they do the work, they probably can achieve it too, but they're just not willing to do the work and they don't have the energy and the drive that you do. So if anybody does think you're arrogant, just stick your middle finger up to them, screw them. Right. There is so much career in this spread, but love keeps on seeping in here. Now, I don't know whether this is because, as I said, you are dealing with somebody or whether this is because you may be reaching a point in life where you are achieving success career wise and you're thinking, I am ready for somebody. I'm ready for like someone to come in and kind of where I can spend that downtime. I want to say if you are looking to settle down with somebody new and if you are having a little bit of difficulty in that arena, I want to say it's again, it's that level up that you have on most. I really feel like people see you as somebody who's out of their league and your, your level really intimidates people in love. If anybody enters your energy field who has any severe insecurities, they are not going to be able to handle your power, your intelligence your success and I do think if you are having trouble in love it's this that's making it a little bit more difficult for you I do think naturally you are somebody who is very difficult to tie down but once you are set on somebody you do really put those roots down and you do devote yourself to someone and I do think this is why this past person with the Netflix and the Maltesers that doesn't have to be accurate by the way guys <laughs> but this past person who wanted you to slow down may still be in your energy field somehow or somewhat because you you invest you're an investor you invest in yourself fully you also mirror that and you invest in others and i think this is something where people get you a little bit misunderstood because they see you going for gold and i think it's some sometimes they think that you're Drive can be somewhat selfish, a little bit emotionless, I want to say here as well. People just don't realise that you invest so, so deeply in emotional committed partnerships that you have to be very careful where you invest that emotional energy. With this part, I also feel parents potentially saying, when are you going to settle down? You may be somebody who already has kids, but you're separated from the father or the mother. Or you may be somebody who doesn't have kids yet. And I really do feel you having some kind of external pressure to settle down. Or to get married or to meet your life partner. I think people are really misunderstood when it comes to your energy. And they see you as sitting still when it comes to your love life. And I'm actually, I'm actually quite shocked that love has came through. Because when I first took a glance at these cards I thought here we go it's another career read but there's so much love energy coming through for this and a lot of people are being a bit, little bit misunderstood thinking that you're sitting still when it comes to your love life but you're not the kind of person to go for any less than you deserve you're not the kind of person to be swayed in a particular direction okay so what do other people actually say about you and here we have the Seven of Pentacles. Again, more of that investment energy. A lot of people see you as somebody who, I want to say, has got it made. I want to say that you are someone who has invested into assets. And if not, you're working hard to invest into assets. I want to say for some of you that you have connections to property investment here. But when people talk about you, they talk about you as somebody who is an investor, somebody who is very money savvy, somebody who goes for opportunities where there is going to be big payback. 
but at the same time I think people talk about you as somebody who is all about the finances and not about the emotions and again I feel like they have got this misunderstood here. Now, if you're somebody watching this who is in a relationship you are most probably in a phase of your life where you're very focused on your career and you've got people around you maybe even your person stating that potentially you've been a little bit cold at the moment and it is because you you get really lit up by expressing yourself through work and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that here we go so we've got the crown for you guys a master a master of what you do Somebody who has, I'm going to put the crown on the top of the lady's head on the seven of pentacles. Somebody who has achieved a lot. Somebody who is the master at what they do. A lot of people around you will big you up and talk very positively about you when they're talking about financial gains. When they're talking about drive. It's like, if you want to achieve something, you need to go and speak to part number three. They've got the know-how, they've got the drive, they've achieved... But again, with the crown, just like the royals, they live in the public eye, they live for the people. They live for their achievements and it's not very personal and it's not very soft. And I do think, again, the only negative words that have been spoken about you is that pawn number three is successful, they've achieved, and if they've not achieved, they're going places. On paper, they are 100% everybody's type. <laughs> I actually see you as a person who looks good, smells good, drives a nice car. Like You're just slick, I want to say. And if you are a female watching this, I want to say you've got very masculine energy in a way that it's like you have like this power that most probably intimidates lovers. But again, the only negative thing that's been said about you is... People don't think that you're emotionally satisfied. And the pressure for you to find a partner or kind of maybe even calm down the career side to be more present in a marriage or relationship if you're already in one is kind of getting on your TITS, is your tits. It's getting on your tits. I'm going to roll the dice. Now I want to roll the dice here to see whether I can pinpoint any particular area of your life that people are talking about. So we'll see whether it resonates with what I've already said. Sixth house of work. <laughs> Virgo, as I said, that Virgo energy and the sun. Guys, your heart and your soul, purpose and journey in this lifetime is to be successful when it comes to your work. You feel an obligation to achieve. And I mean, this is very like... This is it just, this is very like business owner kind of energy, boss kind of energy. You don't have to be either of those, but I'd be very surprised if you're somebody who's not working towards that, if you've not achieved that already. But you feel like, as I said, you know, your work lights you up. Relationships are great and they're fun, but your work is what lights you up. And unfortunately, you have people around you who just have a different view on life. I resonate with this somewhat because, I mean, there's me and my mum. Me and my mum are very different, very similar in a lot of ways, but very different. She lives for love. I live a little bit more for money. And she sees me as being very cold. I mean, I've got a ton of earth energy and a mega Capricorn stellium, so it makes so much sense. It doesn't mean I'm cold. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm materialistic. It just means that that kind of side of life really lights me up and it makes me feel important it makes me feel whole and then with my mom love loving loving relationships relationships make her feel whole and there are so many aspects about her birth chart which makes her move in that direction you know she has i think it's a libra north node so her purpose is very much to be in partnership her life if she lives it in line with the energies around her, is a future where she can have a very successful marriage and have a lot of support within that marriage or within that partnership. 
which allows her to delve deeper into those more Venusian sides of life. My North Node is in Capricorn. My happiness lies in success and status. She wants me to live her way and live for love, but if I do that, I'm not necessarily going to find happiness in that kind of partnership. I have a different way of life. And I really don't expect her to live my way of life because that wouldn't work for her either. And this is the same with you guys. I really feel someone in your life pushing you towards settling down and calming down. And it's not your journey. Your journey is different to theirs. Believe me, people are bigging you up big time when it comes to your achievements and your work ethic and how you are so inspirational and level up from most, but the only negative thing here, guys, is they think you're not happy, but screw that, because you are. When you're ready, you'll settle. Now, let's have a little looky-looky into your current most powerful strength, which you can take forward with you today, or take away with you, after this reading, you may realise this strength or you may not. And we have Honour Your Beauty with Archangel jo Jophiel. Jophiel. Thank you, Jophiel, for helping me discover my inner and outer beauty. Now, I really noticed the green in this card. And it does make me think of success, obviously, and growth, which is something that is very apparent in this reading. But also, it makes me think of, like, green with envy. So it is those people that do take your energy um, as like arrogance, people who do get intimidated because you are a level up from them. So I do think you do have some people who are very envious of you. Also, we do have the symbol of marriage here, okay? But I really see this as you being married to your destiny. You being married to your inner growth. That is where you are at right now. And your life is beautiful just the way it is. And you don't need another person to come in to show you that you are beautiful and that you are worthy. And I think there's some people around you at the moment who don't realise that. There's some people around you that do need that extra person to give them that um, boost or that reminder that they are worthy. Like You don't need that. And if you are feeling more on the side of um, maybe I should settle down because I'm feeling like a little bit of emptiness in my life, it's you've got everything you need within you. It doesn't mean you can't collaborate with anyone else because number three, you chose number three, it is a number of collaboration. Just don't force that collaboration don't force any relationships because you feel like you are being pushed or you feel like you need to because there is like that emotional emptiness starting to occur like take your time with it because you are such a valuable person and asset to somebody you should never give this away too easily some of you don't need to hear that but i feel like some of you may may need to hear that don't settle for less because you feel like you need to you're beautiful on the inside and out, like Jophiel says. We also have the crumbling here. What are you clinging on to? And I really feel like what you may be clinging on to are other people's expectations, the words that other people are speaking about you. But you are the priestess. You are in control of your own life and your own energy. You're a leader of your own life. You are a strong and beautiful individual that has the power to do things your own way and not allow other people's opinions of you to change your trajectory. Stay on your track and do things your way. I really wanna say with this pile, if you're feeling in any confusion here, because you do have the two of swords out here, and the two of swords come out for what people think of you, this is like indecision. Sorry, I'm going to have to get the card out that way. This is indecision. Or this is you not making decisions. I did say when I pulled this card, this is you not compromising when it comes to what people expect from you. 
And I really do think it's around love. But also this could be you at some point. Questioning whether the people around you are communicating something that is correct. Whether the people around you are speaking sense and you should be doing things their way. I really want to say for this pile, you do you boo. <laughs> if you're ever feeling indecision, take yourself away, meditate on it, ground yourself, come back down to centre and then make a decision. You're always to do things your way and make your own decisions. Don't be influenced externally. Because that is the only weakening factor here in this reading. Now, you chose pond number three, and the flower that came upon number three is the poppy. So I do want to talk about the meaning behind the poppy. And the poppy is um, a symbol of respect. And this is something that people need to do. They need to respect your decisions. They need to respect your life journey here and not stick their noses into it. The poppy does also talk about forward movement through transformation. And this is something that you naturally do. You are always moving forward. It's like on to the next one, on to the next one. And it really does feel like you have influences around you that want you to settle down and slow down and that's just not your pace right now. It doesn't mean that you're never going to slow down, it just means you're just not ready yet. You won't feel lit up if you're not still making those forward movements, if you're not still investing in things that bring you big paybacks, now, you're just not ready for that yet and that is fine. The poppy does also talk about blood and DNA and I do feel like that is ancestral gifts that are passed down through the bloodline. Now there may be somebody in your family who has a very similar mindset to you. Now I really do feel deceased here but I do feel like this person was alive at one point when you were alive and I really feel like potentially if you do know who this person is in your bloodline it might be worth talking to somebody in your family about this person and their way of life um this person is this person who is deceased and i really do feel like deceased they could still be alive but i feel like for a lot of you it is deceased here talking to the people in your life who do who do have like a different idea for you about this particular family member is going to kind of put the puzzle pieces together for them to understand your way of life and your thought process and why you do things your way and why maybe you're not ready to slow down like they want you to. I really, really hope this reading is making sense because it is actually very specific. But I want to say you share a very similar mind to this person. Okay, right. I'm going to leave that there, part number three. This is a specific reading, so I really, really hope it resonates in some way or helps you in some way. If you do like this reading, you did feel like it helped, please drop it a like. It helps the video circulate and it helps the channel grow. Also, if you feel comfortable to do so, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Just say hey, tell me which part you claim, but if you have a story connected to this, I would love to hear that too. If you like content like this, please subscribe. I love making content like this for you and I want to see more of you. Hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post a brand new pick a card reading. I usually post once a week. Sometimes I do throw in a little bonus reading when I've got the time, but you are guaranteed a pick a card reading on this channel once a week. So hit that notification bell to be notified as soon as that is released. And part number three, stick to your guns. Do things your way. You are absolutely fabulous. Honour your beauty. Honour your success. And I shall see you in your next reading. Goodbye. Oh, and honour your way. Make sure you honour your way at all times. Okay, bye-bye. See you next time.